All right, guys, welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the general architecture of how you set up your VI to do PID control of your oven. All right, so in the last video, we set up a thermocouple so we could measure temperature. We use the DAC assistant to do that. If you haven't seen uh, that video, make sure you go check it out so you know how to get your temperature readings in. Um, so big picture, what we're trying to do here with this project is we have a oven, right? And it's got a certain temperature inside of it, which is our process variable. We would like to control the temperature in there. And we have a set point, right? So our thermocouple is measuring the process variable. Our set point is gonna be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we wanna use a PID algorithm that compares the current temperature inside of the oven to the set point and decides what to do with our actuator, our heater in this case, um, that's gonna warm the box up, right? So it's gonna send a signal uh, via the DAC to some sort of switching device that turns the light bulb on and off. Um, if it's too cold in the box, it warms up and uh, heats, up, heats up the box to get it close to our set point. If it starts to overshoot, it turns the light bulb off so that we maintain a consistent temperature in there. All right, so that's the big idea of, uh, of what we're trying to do. So let's talk a little bit about how we actually implement that in LabVIEW um, so you can get your oven set up, tuned, and uh, bake a cookie before you're done with the project here. All right, so over here again, we've got our DAC assistant. Our temperature's coming in here. It's just a single value that comes out. This is currently set to a single sample uh, mode, so every time the loop iterates, we're going to get one data point. That's our, our temp current temperature coming out here. All right, so what we want to do is we don't want this uh, DAC to run way too fast, or sorry, this VI to run way too fast. So I'm going to add a delay to the loop to slow it down a little bit. So we'll just grab our metronome. We'll create a constant, and I'm going to do 100 milliseconds here. So our oven responds fairly slowly. So if we update um, our temperature reading 10 times a second, that's going to be uh, plenty fast enough for our application here and it'll be controllable um, and our graphs aren't going to be flying by the screen because we're getting data points in so fast right so that's a that's the first step next thing we've got to do is we've got to implement our PID algorithm so you guys did this in your uh, LabVIEW 3 assignment so go ahead and grab your VI whoop, from that assignment so we're select a VI Here's my PID right here. All right, ignore any warnings that pop up. All right, here we go, we've got our PID. So we've got a set point, the process variable, and our PID gains are all gonna go into this. Um, so we'd like to be able to set our set point on the front panel of the VI. So let's go ahead and just create a control for that. There we go, so now we have a space on the front panel where we can um, input the temperature we want in our oven. Our process variable is going to be our temperature coming from the DAC, right? Connect that. And then the PID gain. So this is a cluster um, that's got three different numeric values in there. So you have your, your three different PID gains, the proportional integral and derivative gains. And if you just create a control off of that on the front panel, you're going to get um, all three of those controls made for you. So it's kind of one of the advantages of using a cluster um, in LabVIEW is you can bundle those controls together and not have to remake each one individually every time. All right, so that's our, our PID, and it's going to produce our controller output. All right, so our controller output in uh, this application, it's going to be a duty cycle, right? So we can't turn the light bulb on halfway. It's either on or off, generally. So what we want to do is uh, to, if we want half power on the light bulb, we can set a 50% duty cycle over some period of time, which means that during that period of time, the light bulb is gonna be on half the time and off half the time, so the, the power averages out over that time to be 50% of max power. All right, so uh, that's what's going to be coming out of our controller output here. And we need some way of converting that into a signal that goes to uh, our switching device that tells the light bulb to turn on and off. So let's go ahead and set up our analog output so we can control the switching device. And then we'll talk about how we get from this controller output to uh, the voltage that's actually going and, and turning the uh, light bulb on and off. 
All right, so uh, this is going to be very similar to what we did with uh, the controlling high power devices in class activity where you turn the fan on and off. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, we'll select our VI. And we'll go to our DAC VI's folder. And we have our analog output in here, right? Um, so we'll need to tell it what channel we want to use here. Create a constant for that. Say we'll use analog zero, that'll work fine. You can use either one, just as long as you pay attention to which ones your wires are actually uh, connected to. And then we need to set what voltage is going to be us going out of the analog input or analog output. So to do that in our previous exercise, what, what we did is we had, you could have a case structure um, or you could also use this select VI that would send um, if you said true, it would send 5 volts out, and if you said false, it would send 0 volts out. We're going to do the same thing here. So again, you could use a case structure to do this. Uh, since our, our case is so simple, this little select VI tends to work really well, and it makes your block diagram a little bit cleaner, but do whichever one you're comfortable with. I'll use the select VI today. All right. so this is the value that gets sent out. All right. there's a selector right here, so true or false. Here's the true value. So if, if the value coming into the selector terminal here is true, we're going to send five volts. And if it's false, we're going to send zero volts. So what we need is we need a signal. We somehow we need to get from the PID to a true false signal that changes in time, right? So if, say we set a 50% duty cycle over a one second period, we want a true signal that's true for half a second and then false for half a second. So we get a 50% duty cycle or a light bulbs on for half a second, then off for half a second. And we've given you um, a PWM VI that will help you out with this. So let's take a look at how to set that guy up. So we're going to again select a VI. Right, and I have this saved in this folder here. So this PWM VI is what we're going to be looking for. Drop that down in our block diagram. All right, and let's take a look at what the um, inputs here. So we have a starting tick count. So this VI is keeping track of how much time passes in each iteration of uh, the loop to know whether the output should be on or off. Right, there's a PWM period, so that's the period of time over which we're averaging our, our PWM cycle. So for this for this assignment, I've we've tried this with a bunch of different ovens. We found that one to two seconds tends to work pretty well for your PWM period. So let's go ahead and we'll set that to one right now. Our duty cycle, well that's gonna be our controller output. So the PID is gonna calculate that for us. So we can go ahead and connect that, right? And uh, this PWM state is uh, the true false signal that's changing in time. And that's what's going to go to our select VI or your case structure if you're using that to tell us whether we should have five volts or zero volts coming out of the analog input, All right? Um, now the only tricky thing with this VI here is the, the starting tick count and then the new starting tick count. Um, it needs to know what the time was when the loop first started its iteration. Um, every, every time the loop iterates to be able to know whether this output is supposed to be true or false. So to do that, we need to have a shift register on our while loop. And we're going to store um, what's called the millisecond tick count. So it's just a, a count of how many milliseconds have passed since we started running the VI. It's essentially a timestamp, so it knows when the, the loop started iterating every single time this uh, loop goes. So we need to know when the VI started running. So to do that, we're going to go over before uh, our while loop, and we'll initialize our shift register with the time when we start running the VI. To do that, you can go to the timing palette, and you can grab this tick count VI, and we'll wire that into the shift register to initialize it. And this is going to become the starting tick count there. And then the new starting tick count is going to get updated when the loop iterates. So we'll take that off here and connect that to our other uh, terminal on our shift register. And that is the basic framework of how uh, the P 
PID oven control can work for you. So let's just talk through generally big picture what's happening here. The DAC reads a temperature, which is your process variable. The set point and the process variable as well as your PID gains get sent into the, the PID algorithm, which compares the process variable to the set point, um, takes into account how it, that's changing with respect to time, and figures out if it needs to turn on or off uh, the light and how much power it needs. So it's gonna calculate a duty cycle between zero and 100%. 0% being the light is always off, 100% being the light is always on, and it will send that requested duty cycle to the PWM VI over here, which will create a true-false signal that changes in time. That true-false signal tells us uh, whether we're outputting 5 volts or 0 volts from the DAC, which is ultimately what controls your switching device and turns the light bulb on or off. And that's what's necessary to control our... Uh, our oven. Now uh, the assignment asks you to also have some graphs so I'll, I'll leave you guys to figure out how to um, include like a chart of your temperature versus time. It also wants uh, to be able to see that if you're far away from your set point you should see that the duty cycle is really high where it's putting a lot of power into the oven to heat it up quickly. Um, to do that you might consider also using a chart to, to plot this five or zero volt uh, value right here, because you'll get a essentially a square wave that shows you when the light bulb was on versus when it was off. So that's just a quick hint to, to make the assignment a little easier for you. All right, with that, that should get you started on uh, the oven assignment. You should be able to, to follow this along and get your oven set up. Once you've got it set up, you can start playing with the gains to get the oven to sit close to the set point without overshooting. My recommendation is to start with the proportional gain, get reasonably close, and then try tweaking the integral and the derivative gain so that you get really close to the, uh, to the set point. All right, as always, if you have any questions, just swing by the lab and we'll be happy to help you out.